All right, good morning. This is Mike Patty with America's News Now, and I've got uh, Eric Thomas, the hip-hop preacher, live on the line. I'm so glad to have him here. Uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, welcome and good morning. Hey, thank you so much for having me on the show. I know there are probably a million and one other individuals uh, that you could have asked to do this, so it is truly a privilege to be able to be on today, to be alive, first and foremost. I don't know if I told you, but I'm vertical. I'm standing up. I don't have... Uh, any kind of machines attached to my body, oxygen or anything. So it's just good to be alive today, and I hope that you know whoever is uh, listening today that they might be able to take away something from uh, from this program. Um, I appreciate that, Mr. Thomas. I know a lot of times uh, I myself take things for granted, and, and you kind of help put things in perspective. Uh, coming, uh, becoming one of your uh, fastest, biggest fans. Um, well, let me go ahead and, and get to our questions because uh, I, I know you've got a lot of valuable insight and input uh, that a lot of our uh, viewers or readers could uh, profit from. But uh, I guess my first question is how do you know some of the challenges that you face today, how are they you know, similar or different to some of the challenges you faced early on in your career? You, you know, I, that's a good question. You know, I, to be honest with you, I never thought about it before. Um, you know, but I really think that you know, challenges are, they, they, they come in the same costume. I, I don't think that they really change a lot. Uh, you talk about uh, the, the will to persist. You talk about uh, the will to overcome obstacles. I think they're all the same, you know. I just think the difference between the obstacle that I face today and the obstacles that I faced when I was a teenager is really the way I saw those uh, obstacles. You know, when I was younger, I, I saw them as uh, something that was in my way, uh, something that hindered my progress. I saw myself as a victim almost, but I think, um, you know, as an older uh, gentleman, now I see those obstacles as really as weight. You know, when you lift weight, you understand that in order to build your muscles, you got to tear your muscles first. You know, and I see obstacles as those those weights, as, as, if you will, uh, that are actually making me stronger. So, you know, when I was young, I was homeless. I was a high school dropout. Uh, nothing has really changed. I have mortgage now, but, you know. Um, nothing has changed. I'm still in school working on a PhD. So some of the same challenges that I had, you know, when I dropped out, I still have as a PhD student. Uh, but I just think that I have coping skills now that I didn't have when I was 16 or 17. Uh, I have, or I use a support system. I don't think that I used a support system when I was younger. I saw it as me against the world. Uh, I read now to get myself through certain things. And I don't think I was reading when I was 16 or 17 years old. So uh, I think, that, again, that the situations are the same, the, ch the trials and tribulations are the same. I just think that my perspective has changed, and I see things a little differently. And that single uh, aspect gives me the ability to hurdle, uh, to jump those hurdles, uh, as opposed to when I was younger, I fell to those hurdles. So so as, as you overcome obstacles, you actually gain strength and confidence. And, and, and what I'm, I, I can really relate to is... Is, is when you're being young, maybe everybody's your competition and out to get you as opposed to, you know, who can I look to for help and, and who can help mentor me and help me along the way? That's that's a whole different attitude than, than you know, me against the world. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, um, you know, again, I, I just think, you know, um, youth is wasted on the young is what Jimmy Stewart said in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. You know, and I just think when I was younger again, um, I, I, for whatever reason, I felt isolated, I think maybe because my biological father wasn't in my life and I had not processed that, I had not healed from that, I really did see myself uh, being alone, but I tell you through Facebook, uh, college, um, you know, through the profession, I just have so many people rooting for me, so many people who support me, that it is, it, it, it would be challenging right now to go through my, my, my uh, trials and tribulations the same way I went through it when I was younger. Um, you mentioned not having a, a father figure when you were younger, um, which kind of leads me to my, my next question. Um, you know, what types of, of challenges are you seeing or do, do people in your audience say, hey, hey, look, uh, Mr. Thomas, you know, here's what I need help with or, you know, here's kind of a challenge I'm, I'm facing. What, what are you hearing from them? Well, you know, I, I don't know if it's one single challenge, but I, I, I think what I'm hearing is that individuals uh, don't have the stamina, you know, individuals don't have a bite or a fight, the motivation, the will to get through certain things. I think 
think really that's what we're looking at. Um, you know, a lot of people are calling me, BT, I've been trying to lose weight. You know, and I'm like, look, you're not the only one trying to lose weight. There are people who've been trying to lose weight for years, and some have done it. You know, if you watch The Biggest Loser, uh, there are people who've lost hundreds of pounds, you know, who've kept it off. And so I think really what I'm hearing is that people are looking for, uh, they're looking to find out how does one become motivated? How does one find the will inside, you know, to keep going? Because like I said, man, you know, people think, man, he, he's motivated, he's pumped up, he's hyped, you know, he has this easy life. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. My mother wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth. My grandmother wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth. You know, but, but what happened is, somehow in my life, I found something within me. And I just think that's what people are missing. They don't know how to tap into their own um, resiliency, their own gifts, their own talents, their own will. And so I think right now, a lot of people are using me, you know, as a liaison until they get there. But I'm letting people know, but for real, you got to find it because at the end of the day, um, you know, ET, yesterday, the, the, the TGIM didn't work. You know, so at the end of the day, I may not be able to be there for you. I would love to be, but, you know, circumstances happen. And so I think that's what most people are looking for. E, how do I activate it? How do I push that button? How does that aha moment happen for me? I think that, that is the common thread that I'm hearing through most of the people who are inspired by me currently. What, uh, what group did you, I know you speak to a lot of groups um, and speaking engagements. What was your uh, favorite group that you spoke to and why? Uh, I have to say, man, uh, graduation. I spoke for uh, one of the graduation programs at Oakwood College, which is the uh, university that I graduated from. And I just think for me, man, just, you know, going to college as a high school dropout. You know, six months prior, a family took me in because I was homeless. And that thing was, Eric, as long as you go to college, you can stay with us, we'll support you. And just to look at, you know, where I had come from, you know, as a high school dropout, someone who was homeless, um, when I think about just what I had gone through and how I was able to, you know, get through those things, I think just being able to speak in that, that auditorium almost 20 years afterwards was amazing. And I don't know if it was the students that I was most excited about or just being back home, being at a place where it took me 12 years to finally get a four-year degree. You know, I, I, you know, I can't tell you if it was the students, the message, or just the fact that, wow, I was asked to speak at this institution after everything that I had gone through, I had been through. It, it was amazing. It was an amazing, amazing uh, day that day. Um, you know, being a first-generation college student, man, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, haven't, haven't spoke to all these groups. Um, what advice... You know, would would you give? And I, I know you give a lot of advice, but uh, you know, somebody's looking for answers, reaching out, struggling, whether it's you know, um, educational, uh, spiritual, or business. You know, what advice would you give them? You know, where where should they start? You know, I always say, man, start with start with your dream. Um, start with your dream, man. I I, I went to um, I've been to Disney World on several occasions, but you know that part, man, at the end where they had Tinkerbell coming down. <laughs> you know, off of the castle, <laughs> you know, unbelievable, man. I'm just thinking, wow, Walt Disney had a dream. I mean, here's a guy, you know, who uh, did what most considered unbelievable, you know, not possible. You know, it, I mean, here it is, he's got Disney World. And so every time I go, you know, I, I make the excuse that I'm taking a group of kids there. But I go because, you know, it is this, this possibility that anything is possible. That if I can conceive it, if I can think it in my mind, you know, if I can believe it, I can conceive it. And so I just say, man, start, start with why you, why you exist. Like, why are you waking up in the morning? You know, why do you go to a job that you don't really want to go to? Why do you study knowing that you don't like to study? You do it because there, there, there is glow, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know, so that, that's where I believe everybody should start, man. You know, uh, when, you, when you look even biblically, you know, at people who were healed, you know, you know, Jesus always asked the question, do you believe? You know, and you were made all by your faith. So I say, man, it's something magical about belief. It's something magical about having faith. It's something magical about being optimistic. And so I 
could start with my goal, with my dreams, with the reason why I wake up every single day. That thing that you're trying to accomplish, that thing that you're trying to grasp, whatever it is, to me, that is the essence of life. Is being able to say, uh, I, I, I think it was the movie Braveheart where uh, Mel Gibson, uh, who played the role of William Wallace, at the end he said, every man must die, but not every man truly lives. And so I say, have a reason for living, have a purpose for living. To me, that, that that's uh, that's the most important thing about life. You can have money, you know, those of us who bought, you know, our, our dream cars, you know, lived in nice homes, traveled. I mean, at the end of the day, those things are cute, but it's nothing like knowing you're waking up with purpose. I, I, I can I can definitely connect with that because I think a lot of times young people ask, you know, what job do I want to get, what this, what that, but if maybe they start with the, the motivation of, you know, why, you know, not not just, you know, to make money, but the, the deep intrinsic, you know, is going to keep them motivated and going and, and uh, every day, then that's, that's probably a shortcut than, you know, trying two or three different jobs before they figure out, you know, what really motivates them. Absolutely, um, absolutely. We're, we're kind of winding down. We're, we're, we're kind of pressed for time. I, I know it's a, important. Um, you talked about early on, it was you against the world um, for for people to, you know, no matter what age, to, to reach out to networks. Do you have, you know, one or two role models or mentors that you kind of call on on a regular basis for, for insight or input? You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I have to say no. Uh, there's a brotherhood that I am associated with, a group of men that we're accountable for one another. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, man, this is a great country, um, you know, a great country, but there's a time that, you know, America's history um, that, that I don't know if we could all be a part of, but, you know, this, this whole idea of, you know, the times of slavery. And I draw from that a lot, man. I draw from the fact that, you know, there was a time in, a, in, in this history, this great country's history, where uh, my ancestors were not allowed, you know, to go to school, that they were not allowed to have certain our jobs that they couldn't drink from the same water fountains, and that inspires me because now here I have an opportunity, you know, um, you know, after this great civil rights movement that that was that was not just for uh, people of color but women, um, you know, uh, people of all you know of all walks of life, uh, and we have opportunities now. There's no excuses. Uh, you know, President Obama is now you know, the first minority president, and so that's my motivation is that I have a chance at the American dream. Every day I wake up. You know, I have a chance to go to school. I have a chance, you know, economically. You know, I have a chance, um, you know, to be what I want to do and, 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 and see the world. You know, I have a passport like so many Americans, and I have a chance, man, there's no limit. So that's really my motivation, man, that, that there was a time in this history that uh, my people were, um, you know, they were limited, that they didn't have total access, and I have it now. And so there's absolutely no excuses. There's no reason for me not to put in 120% Well said. Um, we're kind of winding down on time. We got about sixty seconds. Um, what are you working on next? And and how can people get in contact with you if, if they want to touch base with uh, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher? We're working on the book, uh, the audio book, uh, and then the book. We're looking to release it uh, two thousand eleven. You can reach me at et the hip hop preacher dot com again et thehiphoppreacher.com and of course I'm on Facebook if you go to etthehiphoppreacher.com you can follow me through tweet or you can follow me through Facebook and uh, just looking for another great year serving man this has been an awesome year I've been able to uh, just give away uh, motivation give away my gifts and my talents and I just believe man it's better to give than to receive and not just 
in the holiday season. So I'm looking forward to giving more. We got a series for marriage, marriages coming out where people who are thinking about getting married, people who are in relationships.